Hello and welcome to the next episode of the vSphere Breakroom Chats. I'm Glenn Simon, Product Marketing Manager for vSphere. In this series, we bring VMware uh, experts as well as partner experts to talk about VMware vSphere and related technologies. Now, in today's episode, we're talking about the latest release of Tanzu Kubernetes Grid version 2.0, uh, which is integrated into vSphere 8. Our expert today is Timmy Carr. Hello, Timmy. Hey, how's it going? And Timmy is our senior product line manager for Tanzu, the Tanzu Kubernetes platform. So, uh, Timmy, uh, one. Uh, so, first of all, just right out of the gate, what what excites you the most about TKG 2.0? Yeah, thanks for having me, Glenn. So, so really, when I think about TKG 2.0, there's a lot of fun and kind of nerdy things to like about it. But for me, being like a Kuber nerd, like I think the thing that I like the most is that you'll see an even closer alignment to what the upstream community is doing from a cluster API perspective. The API surface in TKG 2.0 is all based on upstream cluster class, which is a which is a API that has been developed by the Kubernetes uh, cluster life cycle special interest group. That cluster life cycle special interest group built all of the machinery that we use in our products to help deploy Kubernetes. And so if you're looking at VMware and our tools for this, you're using a Kubernetes like first implementation of the, of the patterns for deploying Kubernetes infrastructure on vSphere. So that's the thing that probably excites me the most. I know that that's not like super flashy, but it's really important for me for us to like tightly align with the way the community expects Kubernetes to work. And in I see. And yeah, so it, uh, now, now if we pivot, I mean, talk a little more about the actual capabilities yeah. uh, in TKG 2.0, uh, what are they? What are the, what are the biggest highlights you think? Yeah, I think I'd put it in, in two different, uh, you know, two different areas, right? Cluster management, leveraging that API that I talked about, and we call it the cluster class API. That API gives us a, a, a sense of common topology that you can leverage when you're deploying your clusters. Meaning like, I want the shape and size and maybe some integration points for my clusters that associate with this class to all take on the characteristics of that class. And there's many useful sorts of um, governance and policy sorts of use cases that you can that you can build on top of that. That's pretty exciting. And then, and then to complete that, we, once we have the shape of our cluster, well, then we have to actually run things on the cluster that make it meaningful. And those things are like, those things are typically like, how do I log? How do I monitor? How do I, you know, maybe integrate with authentication capabilities? How do I run on the network? Those sorts of things we all look as packages that are installed on our cluster. And this isn't a new phenomenon. We've had package managers in many systems over time. Um, as we look at Kubernetes and we start thinking of, it, thinking of it as our distributed kernel for running our applications, we need some sort of package manager to be able to, to define those dependencies of the things that are running on our clusters. And package management is that other side of it. So like you really start to build a more cohesive story with TKG 2.0, leveraging the shapes and the packages that are going to run on the shapes. So it sounds like together, cluster management, package management, that really it's, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong here, but it's sort of a set of capabilities that allow you to, def, you know, much, I guess, define sort of standard configurations for clusters, maybe cookie cutter configurations that you can easily replicate and deploy. Is that partly what we're talking about or? Yeah, I think that really hits it. I mean, I think, I think that hits, hits the nail on the head and, um, you know, I really think this like hits home for, you know, like hits home for people who've had to manage these sorts of systems as a whole. You mm -hmm. realize in any sort of like enterprise that like when you're managing a system, you end up with things that kind of look similar. And I think we've seen that pattern over time, right? Like we built as, as VI admins, like we started off building like, you know, our Windows box, right? And we realized, oh, well, you know, that Windows box like that image that we deploy is the same for pretty much all of our customers. We really need to make these sorts of customizations to get it to run on a network. And then we can provide that image so that people can go install their applications. We're starting to look at our distributed application that is Kubernetes in that same, in that same fashion. We're really just defining like the shape of it and the things that should be on it when we first want to, when we want to turn it over to our customers. Mm -hmm. 
Now, I've heard a uh, Carvel mentioned in, regard, in regards to package management. What is that? Yeah, Carvel tooling is a open source project. And like, here's the thing, Carvel is a collection of tools and it's very much driven like uh, via like a Unix, like single purpose tool sort of uh, uh, like construct. There's, there's like seven or eight of these tools that we have that you kind of string together to build uh, for, for, for many purposes. It doesn't just have to be for package management, but let me like give you some of the highlights. We have a couple of different tools in the Carvel suite. We have one that's in charge of, you know, checking in as a package manager, maybe to Git repository, say, hey, install these packages. We have another tool that's explicitly all about how we declare what these packages should look like. And then we have another tool in the Carvel, in the Carvel suite that allows us to, you know, customize these sorts of configurations. And you start to add these things together and it's a suite of how we can over time allow packages to be deployed to clusters and then how these packages can be upgraded across clusters. And I think that, you know, it, it comes down to, you know, why are there seven or eight tools? Well, we want a single purpose tool in case people thought of different use cases for these sorts of things. And indeed we've seen people use different aspects of this Carvel suite to work with different sorts of, uh, different sorts of data sets like, you know, configuration files, right? In the end, we've settled on the suite because we think it's a pretty interesting, uh, interesting solution for a common problem, which is really package management in a distributed system. Okay. <clears throat> now, uh, of course, you know a lot of what the Tanzu team, what you guys build, is useful and and valuable to like software developers, DevOps folks. But now if we kind of laser focus a little more on sort of the vSphere uh, community, the, the, yeah. the IT admins, right? The, the vSphere admins. Uh, what, uh, what do you think they're gonna like the most about this upgrade? Okay, so this is like the first foray of us bringing this API surface to the environment, right? Um, and I think, I think that there's some things that this allows us to build on. And when I did uh, a vSphere uh, infrastructure management and architecture, um, like the common things that I found was that like, I, I always needed to meet some sort of compliance requirement or some sort of governance requirement or something like that. Mm. And for me, being able to specify a like set of configurations it, for a certain sort of compliance needs in my environment was key. Oftentimes I'd have many sites and, you know, site one had to be configured this way while site two is this way. And maybe site one had a different posture than site two for maybe a security perspective or maybe even just a general like networking perspective, right? Maybe site one used like certain NTP servers and site two used other NTP servers, goofy stuff like that from infrastructure perspective that we have to handle as infrastructure admins. I would only really need in this world where we're leveraging cluster class to like specify a certain amount of configuration changes where the rest of these configurations may have commonalities. And that's what's pretty powerful about this API that we're going to give the people who are running these environments. It's going to give us the ability to start to group together policy as it relates to Kubernetes clusters that we're deploying in our environments. And so we're able to say, hey, you know, the configuration for my Kubernetes environment should look like this size. Maybe it's this many machines, maybe it's this. Uh, this control plane configuration. And it should have these sorts of things that are characteristic to my environment, maybe proxy settings, maybe they're, maybe they're um, special server configurations for DNS, those sorts of things, right? Like we find ourselves as infrastructure admins always needing to like dig in and make some custom setting because either our network is configured a certain way or a security posture is configured a certain way. And this starts to give us the ability to leverage those sorts of configurations. I see. Well, there's obviously a lot more to TKG 2.0 than we can cover here in a few minutes, yeah. but uh, where, would, where do you suggest people go to learn more about what is in TKG 2.0? Yeah, so first of all, I'd say, hey, check out the Tanzu blog because there's a lot of new posts there specifically around this API space, the packaging and tooling that we have. Like these are not new things, but they're new put together in a product. And then if you wanna learn more about each of those things, dive in a little bit deeper, right? Um, 
as I mentioned, this whole cluster class API endpoint, this is part of the upstream cluster API project that's a part of Kubernetes special interest group cluster lifecycle, so SIG cluster lifecycle. And you can find it's out on more. GitHub, right? Yeah, you can find out on their GitHub that uh, SIG cluster lifecycle and specifically cluster APIs GitHub repository. Okay. There's a there's a blog that they have related to cluster API there. And Carvel tooling is really the same thing. If you look at, I think it's Carvel.dev, that's a nice jumping off point to jump into the different projects. The things that you're really going to care about as it relates to TKG 2.0 from a Carvel perspective, you're going to care about CAP controller and CAP, um, and then YTT. I would look into those. I would look into those areas there from a from a packaging perspective. Um, and you know, I, I, like by all means, feel free to reach out to us here at VMware if you if you'd like some additional additional pointers as well. Okay, uh, and I, actually, I, I want to provide one last note for everybody. If you're not familiar with our Kubernetes uh, integration with uh, vSphere 8 um, and the TKG capabilities. Um, TKG 2.0 is integrated with vSphere is available as part of vSphere Plus. It's also part of vSphere with Tanzu, which is an add-on to Enterprise Plus, the Enterprise Plus edition. So that's how you can get those capabilities. Uh, and with that, I think we, uh, we that's all, all the time we have for this episode. Thanks, Timmy, for joining us today. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and, and for everyone else, if, if you like this epo episode, uh, please join us uh, again. Uh, next week for uh, a new episode of our break room chats. Uh, this is your host, Glenn Simon, signing off for now. Have a fabulous day, evening, night, or and or week. Bye for now. Bye.